Thank you for taking the time to watch this in-service training presentation on temporary cardiac pacing with the PACE 101 brought to you by Cardiotronic Ozipka Medical. The PACE 101 is our single chamber external pacemaker. The PACE 101 provides easy to use temporary pacing in either the atrium or ventricle in demand or asynchronous pacing modes as well as a high rate function for rapid atrial pacing. Other notable features include a long battery life, small form factor, and its light weight. The proven reliable technology in the PACE 101 is the reason Ozipka Medical is OEM for Medtronic, St. Jude, and Oscor's external pacemakers. The main purpose of cardiac pacing is to maintain adequate cardiac output. The PACE 101, in conjunction with a stimulation lead system, can be used whenever temporary atrial or ventricular stimulation is indicated. PACE 101 can be employed for therapeutic, diagnostic, or prophylactic purposes. There are no contraindications with regards to the use of PACE 101 for temporary cardiac stimulation for therapy and prevention of arrhythmia. The state of health of the patient, however, can restrict the choice of operational mode and stimulation parameters. A stimulation mode involving atrial sensing is not indicated during atrial fibrillation. High rate or overdrive stimulation therapy must only be used in the atrium. Let's walk through the components and layout of the PACE 101. The lead terminals, marked as one on the diagram, are found on the top of the PACE 101. The green LED, marked as two on the diagram, blinks to indicate a sensed event was detected. The yellow LED, marked as three on the diagram, blinks to indicate stimulation has occurred. The yellow dial, marked as four on the diagram, adjusts the pulse amplitude from 0.3 to 12 volts. The white dial, marked as 5 on the diagram, sets the mode of the PACE 101. The black button, marked as 6 on the diagram, activates high-rate stimulation. The green dial, marked as 7 on the diagram, sets the sensitivity threshold. The blue dial, marked as 8 on the diagram, sets the stimulation or basic rate. The red LED, marked as 9 on the diagram, indicates error or low battery. The lead terminals accommodate pins from 0.9 to 2 millimeters. The positive terminal is red and the negative terminal is black. The battery compartment, marked as 12 on the diagram, houses the 9 volt battery. The PACE 101 has several modes of operation that can be adjusted using the white dial. OFF indicates the device is turned off. VVI indicates the device is in demand mode, inhibiting if intrinsic activity is sensed. VVI beep is the same as VVI mode but with acoustic sounds times 2 is high rate mode. The PACE 101 will pace at 2 times the basic rate when the high rate button is pressed. Times 4 is high rate mode. The PACE 101 will pace at 4 times the basic rate when the high rate button is pressed. To start of the pacemaker, make sure the pacemaker has a battery and turn the pacemaker on. Check battery status and replace battery if necessary. To prepare the patient, Place the stimulation electrodes or leads and extension cable, but do not connect them to the pacemaker yet. To prepare the pacemaker, select the primary stimulation mode. Set the pacing rate with the rate control dial. Set the pacing amplitude with the amplitude control dial. Now only if the patient has an intrinsic heart rate that is hemodynamically tolerated over a long period of time, set the stimulation amplitude to its minimum in order to avoid asynchronous pacing when the leads are connected and or during the determination of the sensing threshold. However, if the patient is depending on the pacemaker, set the amplitude to at least eight volts. Now connect stimulation electrodes to the pacemaker. Make sure the polarity is correct. Determine the sensing threshold if the patient has an intrinsic heart rate that is hemodynamically tolerated over a longer period of time. Determine the cardiac capture threshold and set stimulation amplitude accordingly. Monitor the ECG of the patient and adjust amplitude and or sensitivity if necessary. Let's review how to set the sensing threshold. The sensing threshold is the value that determines whether the pacemaker will pace or inhibit. If the pacemaker detects a signal higher than the sensing threshold, it inhibits. If the pacemaker detects a signal lower than the sensing threshold, it paces. To ensure the pacemaker is properly and safely inhibiting in the presence of the patient's intrinsic heart activity, the sensitivity threshold should be set to one half or one third the patient's P or R wave amplitude in AAI and VBI mode respectively.
To set the sensing threshold, first set the basic rate to 10 pulses per minute lower than the patient's intrinsic heart rate. This allows sensing and avoids stimulation. Second, decrease sensitivity by increasing the sensitivity value so the pacemaker is not sensing any intrinsic activity. The green LED will stop blinking and the pacemaker will be operating in asynchronous stimulation mode. Now slowly increase sensitivity by decreasing the sensitivity value until stimulation is inhibited. The green LED will start blinking. This sensitivity value is patient's P or R wave amplitude. It is suggested that the sensitive value be set to one half or one third the patient's P or R wave amplitude. If the sensitivity is set too high, there is the risk the pacemaker will inhibit due to sensing an event that is not related to the P or R wave. In this example, there is failure of appropriate ventricular firing due to ventricular oversensing. To avoid this, the sensitivity value should be set to one half or one third of the patient's P or R wave respectively. If the sensitivity is set too low, there is the risk the pacemaker will inappropriately pace. In the two examples shown, atrial and ventricular undersensing causes asynchronous pacing while the patient has intrinsic activity. Again, the sensitivity value should be set to one half or one third of the patient's P or R wave. To set the capture threshold, first set the basic rate to 10 beats per minute higher than the patient's intrinsic heart rate. This avoids inhibition. You want to recognize cardiac capture in the ECG monitor. Second, lower the stimulation amplitude until the stimulation pulse is no longer effective and there is no capture. Now slowly increase the stimulation amplitude until the stimulation pulse captures the heart. This stimulation amplitude is the patient's capture threshold. To be safe, set the stimulation amplitude two to three times higher than the capture threshold. If the stimulation amplitude is set too low, the pacemaker may fail to capture the chamber. In the two examples shown, there is a failure of atrial and ventricular capture due to low stimulation amplitude. To ensure proper capture, set the stimulation amplitude two to three times higher than the capture threshold. To select asynchronous stimulation, rotate the sensitivity dial completely counterclockwise to position F. Set the mode dial to VVI. VVI mode combined with the F position on the sensitivity dial puts the PACE 101 in A00 and V00 mode. Now determine the cardiac capture threshold and set the stimulation amplitude to 2 to 3 times the capture threshold. This provides a safety margin in case the capture threshold increases. Complications can arise from temporary cardiac pacing that the user should be aware of. There could be a significant rise in the patient's capture threshold, leading to a loss of effective stimulation. There could be a significant drop in the ECG signal amplitude after lead dislocation, resulting in loss of sensing. An abnormal pacemaker setting can cause erratic rhythms and compromise stroke volume and cardiac output. Inappropriate high sensitivity setting, sensing of the R or T wave in the atrium or P wave in the ventricle, and detection of interference can lead to ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation, and death if not immediately recognized. Overdrive stimulation in the atrium or rapid atrial pacing can cause accidental conduction into the ventricle, causing ventricular arrhythmia. Battery failure or exhaustion leads to failure to stimulate. The pacemaker is protected against accidental liquid spills. To clean the device, use a towel or sponge moistened with water or alcohol. For disinfection, the enclosure of the pacemaker can be cleaned with hospital cleaning agents. Do not submerge the pacemaker in water or any other cleaning solution. Do not use any scrubbing powder or liquid on the device, and always refer to the instructions for use. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Please contact your local representative if you have any questions.